Next, I have Margaret Davis and Jeremy Sankey. And members, I, I want to let you know, we did notice that we would like to limit testimony to two minutes. I'm going to do my best um, to stick to that. Madam and Chair. So, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Could we ask that Dr. Melanie Johnson uh, remain in the room so that we can ask questions later? Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Davis, Mr. Sankey, followed by Marin Schroeder and Susan Nokleby. I apologize for the mispronunciation. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name and proceed. First of all, I want to thank committee members for organizing this uh, hearing to hear about the positive need for cannabis, medical cannabis. <clears throat> I live in rural Minnesota, Minnetrista, Minnesota. My husband and I had a company named Medical Evaluations, Inc., which was started <laughs> in 1985, and we changed its name this January to Medical Marijuana, Inc. I have visited the current version of the bill, 1070, and after hearing what has come forth so far, I'm sure the committee will look at it in a very favorable way, how to increase the opportunity to get medical marijuana. My company now presently is one of the new hemp growers of marijuana. I'm in the process of purchasing my seed, which is not really an extremely easy task. But I have a farm and I have my equipment, a tractor, a planter, a cutter, a combine. The purpose of my presentation to you is to outline some of the difficulties that exists today in getting access to medical marijuana, and it's been already well-versed. So I won't have to repeat that, but I want to tell you a glaring story that you haven't heard. I have a friend, her name is Pat Rabine. She recently died from pancreatic cancer. I'm at church, her son, Bob, approaches me. Margaret, could you get me some marijuana? Do I look like the type of person would have marijuana on me? <laughs> well, you're supposed to laugh. So anyway, I said, well, you can get legal medical marijuana. His mother passed away at 82. The pancreatic cancer came on fast. It moved fast. She was um, very ill. She was one of my best friends. So I called several people that I know that get access to medical marijuana, but not through the pharmacy. They didn't have any. She wouldn't smoke. They could get that. They finally found some. Where? I don't know. But she was too sick to go to the doctor to get approval. Too sick to even barely talk. This lady sang at my daughter Annie's wedding. She had a voice like a person who should be singing at the opera. They played it at her funeral, and she sang the Lord's Prayer. Pat Rabine suffered so, so badly, she couldn't move with this pancreatic cancer. It's painful, and it goes quickly. Of the two companies now that are operating, MinMed and, and uh, LeafLine, are the only two who are able to, as far as I know in Minnesota, to produce medical marijuana. Ms. Davis, if you could wrap up, you are at oh, more I'll, than three I'll talk minutes. faster. Please just complete your testimony. Okay, thank you. And anyway, I would like to be the third company to produce it because we had doctors <clears throat> working for us and we had a very good business. When we sold the company, we had 3,700 doctors who came to medical uh, evaluations. Thank you, yeah. Ms. Davis. Thank I, you. Um, we're going to have to move on to mm -hmm. Mr. Sankey. Well, can I just have one last sentence? Uh, quickly, please. Uh, lastly, Minnesota could prosper economically if a blind eye would be opened and would look to the changes necessary 
to be made because marijuana products are being obtained either from Canada or Mexico or going to Colorado. Okay, thank you. 